everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm going to do another Victober related video, this time talking about contemporary nonfiction about the Victorian era. So a few of these books are sort of uh, sort of classic history type books. Some of them cover various aspects of the Victorian era in, in one way or another. I'll talk about that as I go along. I will start off with the books that I've read and would recommend and then end up with a few of the books that I have on my physical TBR that I would like to read either during October or possibly for a nonfiction member. We'll see. So first we have two books that are of the classic history type books that I talked about um, and that, that are specifically about the Victorian era. So we have Unmentionables by Therese O'Neill. This is a book looking at the dirty side or the uh, the secretive side of what it was actually like to live during the Victorian era. So it sort of focuses on sex and sexuality, uh, gender, hygiene, and health issues especially. So one of the things it talks about in terms of um, gender, for example, is the treatment of hysteria and the labeling of women as uh, mad. Uh, those kinds of things it talks about uh, for example, with hygiene, it talks about things like uh, toilets and the the kind of situation that you had during this era. Uh, a lot of it talks about health issues in terms of, for example, the water was really um, was really dirty in this uh, time. So uh, a lot of the time, it was uh, safer to drink alcohol um, than water. So that also caused some issues with alcoholism and things like that. So it's just a really interesting sort of collection of various topics surrounding the Victorian era of things that you might have wondered about or just didn't know that you were wondering about them. Uh, but the thing that makes this such an approachable book is Therese O'Neill's very humorous um, take on writing a nonfiction book. She's a, she has a lot of humor in the way she writes. Uh, she sort of um, tongue-in-cheek kind of um, tone throughout the book. Next we have a little bit more of an extensive book and that is How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman. This author has used a lot of primary resources and a lot of research into creating this very extensive and sort of wide scope uh, kind of history book of this era. So it is using the format of following the life of someone living during the Victorian era throughout a day. So it starts off with a person waking up and leaving the bed, dressing, cleaning, eating breakfast, going to work, etc. They go through the motions and as uh, the, the book follows that um, structure, there's a lot of various discussions surrounding the era. For example, ethics related to the working place, uh, things like um, the clothing that people were wearing and what kind of materials were used, uh, the, even things like the development of the sewing machine at the end of, or the towards the end of this, the, this era that changed both the way the people uh, dressed and because of that the way the people moved. Um, but also it created an entire commercial market as well. So there's a lot of things uh, in this like about food, about um, living circumstances, about family and norms, so many various things. So this is just probably one of the best books to pick up if you want um, the broad strokes of the era but also uh, read a person, read an author who has clearly done her work. Next we have a biography and that is Beatrix Potter, The Extraordinary Life of a Victorian Genius by Linda Lear. Beatrix Potter didn't only live during the Victorian period. Uh, she moved on to do a lot of her work in the beginning of the 20th century. But I think one of the things that you can definitely tell through reading this book is that a lot of her life choices and lifestyle and the things that she could do and couldn't do and how her life panned out was dependent on become be, being part of this era and especially her parents coming from uh, the early period and the kind of norms and expectations that they had for her life and how she should live and that shaped a lot of her decision making so um, 
I think especially it shows a lot of the constraints that were put on women in this time period and um, the gender stereotypes of the time as well and some of the lack of freedom that women had, especially if they didn't have money. So Beatrix Potter was one of those people who did have money and so she ended up becoming a really successful businesswoman um, aside from being of course an author and illustrator. She also owned land so she was sort of a... Uh, a woman out of her time in a lot of ways and I think uh, you see the the context through which she was growing up and it's really fascinating. The next we have a nature nonfiction and that is Rainbow Dust. Three centuries of delight in British butterflies. So obviously as you can tell from the subtitle this book is not entirely again about the Victorian period. The reason I wanted to recommend this here is because it talks a lot about the interest and um, strong belief in science during the Victorian period. It talks about uh, butterfly collectors and, and, and natural history museums, the prevalence of nature illustrators that was a big thing during the Victorian uh, period and a lot of women actually being nature illustrators as well and being uh, in an indirect way involved in science during this time. The parts in this that I found uh, particularly interesting was the interest in butterflies and the, the overlap with uh, the interest in science and collecting and the natural history museums becoming sort of such a big industry and institution in general. Um, and so that, that is where the Victorian history aspect comes in. The last recommendation I have is Beyond the Dark Veil, Postmortem and Morning Photography from the Fanatis Archive. Even though this is a photography collection, it also does include a few essays. Some of them talk about the um, photography and the development of that. Uh, in general. Some of the essays talk about post-mortem photography and morning photography and what that uh, sort of ritual meant for people during this time period. So it sort of was developing during the Victorian time period and uh, continued on into the early 20th century. So it's mostly a Victorian idea um, and it's a way of course uh, to mourn people but also the photographs were often the only photographs available or uh, existing of these people because it was a very expensive thing to do. So often the, they were the only um, memorials people had. A ceremony that is both interesting from an artistic point of view, but it's also interesting because it is sort of informs you a lot about the death attitudes of the time and uh, some of the things that uh, sort of things related to death culture in general and how much that um, is dependent on context, time and place. Now on to the four books that are on my TBR that somehow deal with the Victorian time period that I'm interested in reading um, possibly for Victober. So first we have a book that I feel like I mentioned last year around this time and that is The Victorian House by Judith Flanders. I actually just realized that I have two books by this author but this book is talking about the house uh, that a person or that a family would live in. I think it starts, uh, it has sort of a similar premise to uh, how to be a Victorian, that it starts with looking at the house and then through looking at the house you get to see various other topics being discussed. Uh, Judith Flanders' irresistible book chronicles the extraordinary rules, routines and backbreaking effort that accompanied the Victorians on their journey through daily life from childhood childbirth to deathbed. So the other book that I have by Judith Flanders is The Invention of Murder. How the Victorians reveled in death and detection and created modern crime. So this is basically talking about a lot of the developments that were being done or, the, or that happened during this time period that informed a lot of the ways that uh, society dealt with crime. It will probably give sort of an, uh, an idea of the norms of the time and especially because crime is so often used as entertainment uh, for entertainment value in, um, in media and things like that, it will be interesting to see the historical lens on that topic. The next one we have is The Butchering Art. Uh, Joseph Lister's Quest to Transform the Grizzly World of Victorian Medicine by Lindsay Fitzharris. So it's basically a, a medicine non-fiction book with a historical lens again. In general, when you look at the history of medicine, it's kind of um, 
stomach turn stomach turning a lot of the uh, things that they did in the past before knowing uh, how bad of an idea things were to do like for example sort of emptying a body of blood uh, to cleanse it um, things like that it's just I'm sure that I will be horrified this time period it was so uh, vital in a lot of in a lot of fields there were so many important changes happening and so of course this is um, covering a lot of the important changes happening within the field of medicine during this time. The last book I have is another one of those that is sort of linked to the Victorian era but not specifically so and that is Mad, Bad and Sad. Women and the Mind Doctors by Lisa Apignanesi. This I mentioned in the March TBR that I made and hopefully I can get to it sooner rather than later because I still haven't. Uh, this is talking about uh, women and mental health as I mentioned with Theresa O'Neill. The treatment of women during this time was often... there's sort of two sides of that problem. One of them being that women who were actually mentally ill were treated so horrendously um, in mental hospitals or asylums really. And then there's the other side of things where women who were considered problems uh, in, in one way or another they behaved in ways that were not acceptable at the time so they were often labeled as mentally ill or mad uh, to subjugate them really. And so there's the two sides of that coin and the problems with the um, with these ideas and I think that is what, what Lisa Apinanisi talks about in this book. Those are all of the books that I want to talk about today in terms of contemporary nonfiction about the Victorian time period in one way or another. As I said, I, they have quite different uh, lenses or sort of main topics really. Um, but some, hopefully something here for everyone if you are interested in learning more or reading more about um, Victorian history. So that's all I wanted to say. I will link the Victober hosts below. Definitely go check their channels out if you haven't already. Uh, and I think that was all I wanted to say. If you read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts and we can have a discussion in the comments below. Um, or if you have any recommendations for me for any Victorian history books that you think I might like, then also let me know below. I hope you're having a good day and you're taking care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon. Bye.